Speaker, we absolutely do, because that was a baloney answer from this minister. And Will the Prime Minister help sandwich British Columbians and spike the hike, or do British Columbians need to throw him out like an old, spoiled, stale pack of baloney? Hey. Eight years as Prime Minister is not worth the cost. And thanks to his policies, millions of Canadians are visiting a food bank for the first time in their lives. And as if prices weren't high enough already, this Prime Minister is planning a 23% hike on the carbon tax in a cruel April Fool's Day joke. But the tax revolt is happening. 70% of Canadians and 70% of premiers are opposed and fighting back. Like in Saskatchewan, where the budget watchdog has determined that Saskatchewan families will pay an extra $2,620 in the carbon tax. So simple question, where are Saskatchewan families supposed to come up with $2,600 to pay his tax? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I have a lot of respect for the former Conservative leader, and he is a proud MP from the province of Saskatchewan, a province that is proud of its Ukrainian-Canadian population. Now, last week, the current Conservative leader said in a radio interview, he implied strongly he would cut all economic aid for Ukraine. Oh, right. This is a chance for the MP from Saskatchewan to say, does he support that shameful position? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? The Honourable... The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. They desperately don't want to answer for the carbon tax pain they're causing Canadians. And no one is fooled by the ridiculous rebate ruse this government is selling. That's because Canadians know that the carbon tax was, rebate was specifically designed to exclude all the secondary costs that go up when the producer, the shipper and the retailer all have to pay their higher share of carbon taxes. And the average income earners, the middle income earners across Canada are worse off even after the rebate. $900 worse off in Alberta, $500 worse off in, Sask in Saskatchewan, $600 worse off in Ontario. Why doesn't the Prime Minister show some compassion and spike the hike? Yeah. The Honourable Mi Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I'm glad to hear the member opposite talk about the rebate because that is what it is. This is returning money to Canadians. Eight out of ten families are better off. It is revenue neutral for the government. But I notice that this Saskatchewan MP, a member of Parliament many of us on this side of the House really respect, someone who is proud to represent the people of Saskatchewan, I'd like to hear him say, does he support his leader's shameful position on Ukraine? Yes or no? The people of Saskatchewan deserve to know. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, food bank usage in Toronto is up 500%. Now they want to hike the carbon tax on gas, on groceries, on home heating by 23% on their way to quadrupling the tax over the next six years. What a cruel April Fool's joke. According to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, the average, Canadian, the average Ontario family will pay $1,674 of carbon tax. Where does this Prime Minister think they're going to get that kind of money? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, Canadians can see through these Conservatives and they know that the only thing these Conservatives know how to do is cut, 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 and the people who suffer the most are the most vulnerable. They want to cut the Canada Child Benefit. They do not support dental care, which is helping the most vulnerable among us. They do not support early learning and child care, which is helping make life more affordable for Canadian families. They are going to push, they want to push Canadians into poverty. We won't let them. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, they've already done that and we're going to cut the taxes. If you give back $1,000 to an Ontario family but you take $1,674, Liberal math says that's more, but real math says that's less. The Prime Minister doesn't get it. He's not worth the cost, especially for the 300,000 Torontonians who ate in a food bank just last February. They are about to hike taxes by 23% in less than two weeks. Why is she the only person in Canada who thinks that raising taxes will lower the cost of food? The Honourable Minister of Finance and Deputy Prime Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, if the member opposite really believes her rhetoric about supporting Canadian families, why does she think that cutting support for them will help? Why doesn't she support early learning and childcare? Why doesn't she support the Canada Child Benefit, which has helped to lift more than 2.3 million Canadians, particularly children, out of poverty? Why doesn't she support dental care, which is helping the poorest Canadians be able to take care of their health and their teeth? That is conservative hypocrisy, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Peterborough, Kawartha. After eight years of this Liberal NDP coalition, food has never been more expensive. In fact, food is so unaffordable that 50 active serving military families from CFB Gagetown are using the Oro Mukto Food Bank. This is outrageous, it is shocking, and it is unacceptable. Right. So, for the hundredth time, on behalf of all the Canadians and 70% of the premiers in this country, will they spike the hike, axe the tax, and make food more affordable? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister uh, for National Defence. Oh, Mr. Speaker, that's an extraordinary comment, and I, I'd like to commend the member for being able to say with a straight face. Because the fact is, Mr. Speaker, we gave members of the Canadian Armed Forces a very significant raise just last year. And when it came before this House to vote for the money for that raise, every single Conservative on that side of the House oh voted against it. Shame. Shame. Mr. Speaker, perhaps they should scrap the crap. Shame. ask uh, members to be very judicious in their use of words and to making sure, and I'm not asking the Honourable Minister to be very uh, judicious in his choice of words. The Honourable Member from Peterborough, Kawartha. Mr. Speaker, that's, that's exactly the lack of classy response I would expect from the Liberal and, and the reality is, is he he doesn't know what's going on because clearly he doesn't listen. These are 50 real families accessing a food bank under that Prime Minister's watch. $700 more in groceries a year for Canadian families. Low-income families are most impacted. A million more users of food banks this year. Students, seniors, low-income families. Right. Those are the facts. That's what we will keep fighting for. Spike the hike. Axe the tax. Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Minister of National Defence. Mr. Speaker, many people in this House profess to support members of the Canadian Armed Forces, and yet when it came time to put your money where your mouth is, they weren't there. When it came time to vote for a pay raise for members of the Canadian Armed Forces, every single one of them voted against it. Mr. Speaker, that's the height of hypocrisy. Shame. In British Columbia, the carbon tax is going up 23 per cent on April 1st. After eight years of this NDP Liberal government, middle-income families are depending on food banks. They receive absolutely nothing, no federal tax rebate, no provincial tax credit. But they do get higher prices for food, gas and heating. Seven of ten premiers are demanding the Prime Minister spike the hike, but the NDP Premier of BC is cheering it on. Will the Prime Minister stop the suffering and authorize Premier Eby to spike the hike on April 1st? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, as with the Conservative Quebec MPs, we are hearing a question that demonstrates either profound ignorance or profound disrespect of the, pro of the system that the province of BC put in place. BC, in 2008, led by a centre-right provincial government, put in place a world-leading price on pollution. That system is popular. That system was voted for by some current Conservative oh. federal MPs from BC. Do they want to tear it apart? The Honourable Member from South Surrey, White Rock. Thank you, Ms. Speaker, and we absolutely do, because that was a baloney answer from this Minister, and that's what we're getting from the B.C. Premier as well. There 
There's 200,000 British Columbians relying on food banks in a single month now. The tax credit shell game, if you qualify, is way less than you pay. BC already has the highest gas prices, $2 a litre just this morning. A 23% hike will force up prices another 18 cents a litre. This Prime Minister isn't worth the cost. Will he show some compassion and authorize the BC Premier to spike the hike on April 1st? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, did the MP from BC just accuse the Premier of BC of putting forward baloney policies for the people of BC? to step on the jurisdiction of the province of BC, is it intended to go against a system put in place in 2008 by a centre-right BC provincial government that the people of BC support? That is astonishing, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Central Okanagan, Similkani Nicola. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, more and more British Columbians are lining up at food banks. That's not baloney. The fact that many can't afford to drive with a buck ninety-nine a litre gas isn't baloney either. What's also not baloney is on page 75 of the BC's 2024 budget, where the provincial government blames this Prime Minister for forcing a 23% carbon tax hike on April 1st. Will the Prime Minister help sandwich British Columbians and spike the hike, or do British Columbians need to throw him out like an old, spoiled, stale pack of baloney? Hey. The Honourable uh, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, let's just remember that every single one of the Conservative MPs in this House today ran on a platform promising a price on pollution. And let's just remember that the BC caucus of that party includes MPs who, when they were in the provincial legislature, voted for British Columbia's current world-leading price on pollution. So Canadians and the people of BC have to ask themselves, do they even know what they campaigned on and what they voted for? 